Welcome friends to another June video. Today we will examine the origins and early tactics of the Sardaukar. What built them up to be the invincible force, the arm of the empire, they are at the start of the first June novel. How did they fight early on in their time as conquerors? Spoilers for the June encyclopedia throughout. Let's get straight into it. Seleucia Secundus is a harsh world, a jungle world. There's a tribe there called the Sardau, and they were a warrior tribe who favoured the strong through rituals, trial by combat, endurance tests and raids on other tribes. This whole process starts when you are only six years old. You then start daily instruction on how to fight with a knife, sparring matches to you your blood and develop timing, technique and combat reflexes. After puberty, death combat begins. It's formal and between two single people, and if you win the contest, you are blooded and had passed the first stage of initiation. The unfit were killed at an early age, the strong remained. You can see, much like the Fremen, the needs were of the tribe were the priority over the one, the individual. Conflict between the sexes was not allowed at any age. If you lived past puberty, then you became a wife or a concubine. The Fremen, by contrast, allow both men and women to fight. Children between 8 and 12 would face survival tests twice a year, in midwinter and midsummer. No rescue party would be sent out for them, and the child would have no knowledge of the skills they may need. This lent itself to two outcomes. The child would return alive or would be dead. In your first year after puberty, males were sent to Skull Reach. This area had the harshest heat on the planet, but over 90% of those sent returned, showing how strong the trials earlier in their life had made them. When they return, they are made full warriors, and they could join the raids on the other tribes. They had learned at this stage swordsmanship, animal riding, unarmed combat, and basic tactics. The leadership of the tribe fell to the most capable military leaders, and as their strength grew, so did their size, until over time the tribe became a planetary empire, a nation. During its expansion at first, every member of a tribe was killed, but over time they were allowed to join the ranks of the Sado tribe. Through a custom called the Circle, any warrior, down to the most junior, could, after an action, critique his commander and prove they could have achieved the objective quicker. If they did convince those people, they were chosen as the battle commander for the next action. This replaced the trial by combat. This would ensure senior but less capable leaders would be replaced with those who had a better military genius. The Fremen maintain a challenge through combat for their leader to ensure they continue to be the best person for the job. This tough and ruthless force was hired by House Megara. They conquered House Megara. The fanatical Sardaukar, then using captured ships, seized a wide area around Megara, but due to the slowness of space travel at this time, the Landsrad had time to prepare for their attack and the result was a stalemate. But it did have the effect of forcing the great houses to negotiate. It was judged the Sardaukar would win, but it would leave the empire a graveyard. So instead, there was the Treaty of Corin. The leader of the Sardaukar became the first Bedisha emperor, Shusat Carino I. Some houses did not want to sign. One such was Jansene, so the emperor unleashed the Sardaukar. They were prepared for a long fight, the Jansene, but well-placed guerrilla teams paralysed the planet's communication and transportation, stormed military barracks and assassinated or captured high military and political leaders, all within a few days. Up close, the Sardaukar had concealed weapons, shigawaya in their hair, which could be used as a garrote, and a fake toe or two could be installed with stabbing weapons. The final assault on the shocked capital left no defenders alive. 
Later, when certain houses took exception to the emperor's supremacy on the voting board of Chom, Chom controls all economic affairs across the known universe. And those houses joined the Lishash Confederation, which then attacked Sadakar ports and outposts. Long prepared, they achieved what they wanted, but suffered high losses. They captured a few Sardaukar leaders, a rare thing. They tried to sell them as hostages, but the response was four words, let them drink blood. In response to this, some leaders tore out their throats with their fingernails, and the rest died attacking their captors with no weapons. Henley sent Sardaukar to recapture the lost outposts. They did, and took no prisoners and then attacked the planets of the Lishash Confederation and routed its armies. Lishash itself was the first to fall. Its major cities burned, its rulers executed, its citizens dead by the sword. The Lishash Confederation begged for mercy, but this did not come until the Landsrat commander who fought with the Sardaukar with his own forces asked them to stand down, which they did, but more because they were caught between the will of the Landsrad and the Lion Throne than the demands of the Landsrad army's leader. After this, expansion by the Carinos became a relief valve for the Sardaukar. It kept them sated and ready through fighting in different terrains and against new adversaries. The myth became they were invincible, and their origins on Seleucia Secundus as a tribe were forgotten. It instead became the emperor's prison planet. Now friends, I turn this over to you. What do you think to the Sardaukar and the fearsome way they operate? Could the early army have beaten the Fremen? Have you hidden Shigawaya in your hair? Comment down below.